Good evening, and welcome to the November 15th, 2007, Art and Culture Commission meeting. Ms. Arno, can I get you to give a roll call, please? Commissioner Sinclair? Here. Commissioner Courtright? Here. Commissioner Gibson? Here. Commissioner Shalene? Here. We have a quorum. Excellent. Thank you very much. Can I get a motion to approve the agenda? <clears throat> I make a motion to approve the agenda. Can I get a I'll second? second? I'll second it. We have a motion and second to approve the agenda. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Nay? No. Well, that wasn't a nay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> moving forward. Uh, can I get an approval to, can I get a motion to approve the minutes of our last meeting, October 18th, 2018, 2000, I'll get this right, our October meeting. I make a motion to approve the October 18th, 2018 regular meeting minutes. Can I get a second? It's a 17. It is 2017, so I would note the correction on the agenda. Second the motion. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes of our October 18th, 2017 regular meeting. <laughs> minutes, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? No opposition, motion passed. Uh, schedule of announcements, presentations, commission, public, and staff. Mr. Witte. Yes, Chairman Sinclair. Uh, tonight with us for our first announcement, we have the illustrious Councilwoman Rooney. And she will be making an announcement on a upcoming event that we have for 2018. Good evening, Commission. I'm Councilwoman Rooney, and I have an event I just want to put out there for our citizens to know about. Obviously, we are going to be coming into our 40th anniversary next year in 2018, and we're going to be having multiple events. One particular event I just want to highlight today, just enough to tease people, is our fireworks that we're going to have on New Year's Eve. Just a couple of things that will be happening. We'll be have ice skating as well, cocoa with a cop. There will be this huge, huge bonfire. We also will have bonfire rings. And I know a lot of the kids enjoy doing the s'mores. So we're going to bring the s'mores back as well. It's in celebration of what's happening here in the town. We have a fabulous town. A lot of people are moving here. There's going to be events all through the year for the 40th anniversary, but I wanted to bring that one forward so our citizens would know about it and start planning for it. Instead of going out someplace on New Year's Eve, they can actually come here, and we will have a family event for them. So I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Can I? Woohoo! Woohoo! <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so as uh, Councilwoman Rooney announced, there is ice skating. Uh, ice skating is available to us now and will continue through the month of January. Uh, on this particular uh, evening of the 31st, we're actually going to have, I believe, two, if not three, available sessions, so feel free to participate in those. For more information on our public ice skating program, we encourage everyone to visit the town website, pvaz.net. You'll be able to get more information on the dates, times, and programs, admission, and rental rates that are available through our ice skating program. And then on a daily basis, if you would, uh, take a little time, give us a shout out at our skating hotline at 775-3165. And that way you can get the most up-to-date information. Because from time to time, again, being at the Prescott Valley Event Center, there are multitudes of different events and activities that take place there as well and have precedence over our public ice skating times. So those are some opportunities to get more information, plan accordingly. As we know, the Thanksgiving uh, season is coming on us. Uh, we have a Thanksgiving Day skate and a variety of other holiday events and activities coming forward for public ice skating opportunities. 
In addition to that, I would like to encourage everyone to please come out and visit uh, the Fall for the Arts uh, exhibit that's still, that is on, currently on display here at the Pres Prescott Valley Library. Uh, there's a juried exhibit, so you'll be able to see the winners from this year's event. But the one uh, award that has yet to be bestowed is the Public Choice Award, I do believe. So that is available to you. But come out and see. They're on display for a limited time. Uh, and to take advantage of this opportunity. There was a huge show and some really talented folks that are out there in our, in our Quad City region. I encourage everyone to do that. If you're an artist that is just now learning about this, uh, plan on the participating in 2018 as well. Uh, their proposal is in process right now for review and uh, those opportunities will be coming forward and announced in the next year. So at Fall for the Arts, this is a Prescott Valley Art Guild uh, exhibit, juried exhibit and award program in partnership with the Prescott Valley Arts and Culture Commission. So. Also, uh, the applications are due November, on November 17th. You're rubbing off on me, Commissioner Sinclair. The Created Tree applications are due November 17th. If you haven't submitted one, please do so now at your earliest possible convenience as spaces are very limited for this annual display starting December 1st and continuing through January 2nd. This is our 16th annual Created Tree Art Exhibit program and is done so at the Prescott Valley Public Library and if expanded space is needed, uh, also at the Civic Center. This is a great opportunity to promote your group or your organizations and help dec decorate uh, these public spaces. We encourage everyone to be very creative and showcase their artistic flair in building their tree from non-traditional, non-denominational, and most importantly, non-flammable materials. There is absolutely no entry fee or admissions for this festive program and all parties are encouraged to participate. And if you need more information, you can give us a call at the office at 759-3090. And these applications are downloadable off of the town's website at pvaz.net. Also, the holiday season brings with us a, a wonderful partnership for quite a few years with the Prescott Valley Chamber of Commerce. And this is our Valley of Lights program. Uh, this takes place at Fane Park. So if you're driving down Highway 69, happen to see the big toy soldier giving the salute and encourage you to come over and visit with us, follow those lights and those directional signs to visit. Uh, the, Valley of Lights kicks off November 24th and will continue through December 30th. And this is an absolutely free program, but donations are highly accepted and encouraged. And doing that to continue the format of Valley of Lights moving forward into the future. So again, Valley of Lights at Fane Park, November 24th through December 30th. Mr. Woody. Yep. Sorry, um, I was just going to ask you, I believe I heard or read that there's going to be a night for a walkthrough as opposed to a drive-through. Do we have any information on that? I believe you are, are exactly correct. Unfortunately, at this point in time, I do not have the date off the top of my head. Are there any other commissioners that are familiar with that uh, date or announcement? I, the 28th is what is registering right now. Uh, with that, I would encourage the listening public uh, to visit the Prescott Valley Chamber of Commerce website uh, that the more additional information uh, can be gathered there. I, of course, will do the appropriate research and respond back to you so you have that information as well. But yes, the, on that particular evening, uh, there this is a uh, program in which first time ever, uh, not uh, previously done before, is an opportunity for folks to walk through uh, the exhibit of Valley of Lights. So what we'll have are shuttles uh, from up top off of 2nd Street that will bring folks down and you'll be able to walk through and then also a pickup shuttle re returning you back to the parking uh, areas that are assigned. Uh, so a fabulous, again, free opportunity for folks within donations accepted at the end, so in doing those things. At last year's uh, Valley of Lights, there were also donations of food. Would that be taking place this year yes, also? Yes, I believe there are uh, particular nights that are indicated. Uh, again, I think that will be another one of those listings available at the Chamber website as well. Chamber so. of Commerce website. Yes, Excellent. Sir. Thank you. Okay. 
Please add to your calendar uh, Saturday, January 6th for our 12th annual Polar Bear Splash. You heard uh, Councilwoman Rooney talking about the 40th anniversary celebrations taking place in 2018. This is another one of our kickoff programs. So I really am providing some outreach uh, to you all as commissioners this evening. The goal of this program is we want to capture 40 bears for 40 years. And that's what we're aiming for. A couple years back, we got really close. Uh, I'm, for some reason, the number 34 is registering in my mind of polar bears that we had. That was our apex. And so we want to exceed that number and hit our goal of 40 years, 40 bears for 40 years. So we'd love to have you do that, uh, providing that outreach. Encourage them all to come. Uh, the event kicks off at 930 with the pancake breakfast. Uh, and doing that, again, totally free, as a large number of our programs and services are. Uh, we'll then follow that up with a variety of different activities, ranging from the duck slide, ice cream eating contests, and then concluding the day is one of those most fabulous. And, and I apologize, ladies, this is very gender-oriented. <laughs> this is for all the guys in the community to get out and showcase themselves. This is our annual Ice Princess Contest, AKA the Hairy Man Contest. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it ties directly into those polar bears. That's who they are. That's how they, they showcase themselves. If you look up at the top there, that is our returning champion of last year. He's working to defend his crown and sash and doing such. Uh, but come on out, enjoy. Tons of funds, all kinds of sponsors on site. There are make and take activity booths that will be made available, open to all the ages. Tons of fun. Again, Saturday, January 6th, kicking off with a pancake breakfast at 9.30 and continuing all the way through the not, uh, noon hour with all kinds of funds, activities, and games. I'm doing. Looking at cultural diversity with brown bear, black bear, Kodiak bears, all bear. uh, Asian, big bear, bears, small bears, small bears, sun bears, all, yeah, bears. all bears. All bears, all bears on board. Cool. Yes, sir. 40 plus, that's what we're aiming for. Okay. All right. <laughs> Also, uh, have on your schedule our Friday, February 16th annual Daddy-Daughter Date Night. This is an awesome program uh, held from 6 to 9 p.m. on Friday, February 16th. Uh, registration will open January 1st. Uh, for more information about the program, of course, again, give us a call at 759-3090. Visit us also at the website. Registration is, is available on the website. Uh, if you need help in setting up your account, we're available to do that. Uh, but you can do that 24 hours, seven days a week, starting January 1st and doing so. The cost is $35 per couple, with each additional daughter $15 in doing such. This is a wonderful, exciting evening in which our young ladies are dressing up. Uh, Dad's got his nice jacket and tie on. It's a dancing dinner event, uh, prizes awarded uh, to both, and it is held at our La Quinta Inn and Suites right off of Highway 69. So a very fun and festive event for our dads and our daughters. Also kicking off for our winter uh, activity and sports leagues, uh, first off is our corn, Winter Corn Toss League. This is an eight-week activity, uh, $30 for a team, and team consists of two individuals with a minimum age of 12. Our games will start January 3rd with registration concluding on December 22nd. So we have a short window of getting folks uh, in and enrolled in our program. Uh, as I mentioned before, starting off January, th January 3rd are our games. These are Wednesday evenings starting at 7 p.m with all the games played at the Prescott Valley Event Center. Again, you can register online at pvaz.net, or you can give our coordinator, Ms. Bree Hetzel, a phone call at 759-3093 for more information on this activity. It is a ton of fun. I uh, played in it in the fall league. I learned real quick that I need a lot more practice uh, because there was a young man in that league, probably 12 or 13 years old, amazing skills, and with a cast on the other arm. And uh, he educated me. 
And that was a very good thing to see that. So it's very fun. It was a mother-son team that was out there uh, participating in the league. So lots of fun, lots of activity. So And a very far-ranging skill base. Very novice right here in front of you. Skilled 12 or 13-year-old taking me to school. So lots and lots of fun. And it's, it's available for everyone. So highly encouraged. Very affordable program as well, too. In addition to that, our other sports leagues for the winter are our winter volleyball leagues. Uh, registration opened November 1st and will continue to be open until December 22nd unless maximum capacity is reached. Uh, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays are our game days. We have co-ed uh, A and B divisions on Tuesday. Wednesday is women A and B divisions, and Thursday co-ed C division. Game times are 6.30 to 9.30 on each one of those evenings, with all games being played at Glassford Hill Middle School. The cost is $150 per team, and these games will begin the week of January 8th and will continue on unless there are school holidays or winter events that necessitate school closures. Would also like to inform everyone that our holiday tree disposal program will kick off in 2017 on December 22nd and run through January 5th. This is an opportunity to recycle your cut holiday trees, of course, minus the decorations and lights, with the Town of Presque Valley Parks and Recreation Department. The seasonal dumpster is located on the south parking lot in Mountain Valley Park, and that location is right adjacent to the dog park off of East Nace Lane. Disposal hours will be park hours, which is dawn to 10 p.m. daily. If you need more information about this opportunity, you can give us a buzz at 3090. But we'd like to remind everyone what we're looking for is the naked tree. No artificial trees, wreaths, yard debris, or household waste are permitted at these recycling dumpster locations. So, okay. And then last but not least, Matt Force, uh, partnered with the Prescott Valley PD, is offering a pizza box topper youth art contest. So what we are looking for is individuals that create an anti-underage drinking poster that spreads the message that drinking under the age of 21 is not okay. Uh, the deadline for your entry is November 29th, so it's coming up quick, uh, where you're encouraged to go to mattforce.org, so that's M-A-T-F-O-R-C-E dot O-R-G for more details and entry into the program. Uh, this shared message on the risks of underage drinking uh, and your participation in the program, if selected, uh, have a variety of different categories and grades K through 12 with a $100 cash prize in each category. The winning artwork will then be used as a pizza box topper distributed throughout our community. So join in this wonderful art program of pizza box topper youth art contest through Matt Force with a registration deadline of November 29th. And that concludes our announcements for this evening. Thank you very much. Moving on, division department updates. Mr. Witte. All right, just like to highlight a couple of quick items. As you see, uh, especially in the art and culture uh, division, uh, Ms. Hooper has been quite active with all kinds of different events, services, working with a variety of different instructors, and, and all kinds of activities going on out there. Uh, she's met with a number of different uh, members of her community and review to the public art exhibit. Uh, we'll have a little discussion in regards to that schedule for the 2018 year. Uh, in addition to that, uh, she's begun outreach as it relates to sponsors for both Polar Bear Splash and the Daddy Daughter Date Night we spoke on earlier. Uh, we have a new instructor coming on board related to beginning crochet and knitting for those folks that have interest out there. Uh, in addition to that, uh, has been working uh, all, or has secured a group that's going to help us with decorations for Daddy Daughter Eight, Date Night, so helping with that program in doing those things. Uh, some outreach related to planning for Gold Fever Days in 2018, as well as other 40th anniversary events. Uh, a lot of work related to the studio art tour that took place within the month of October, the fall for the Arts Juried Art Exhibit in partnership with the Prescott Valley Art Guild, as well as then also the Sarah Peacock concert on Sunday, October 29th. 
So there's been quite a few activities going on. Uh, she also aided in supporting our annual um, trick or treat program over at the event center where you have a couple of thousand youngsters and their family in support of them and having all of those kinds of fun things. Um, so she's been a very busy young lady accomplishing quite a bit. On top of that, also accepting a challenge that I had with her in a leadership uh, educational program hosted through the town. So she's party to, uh, participating in that uh, program, which is actually an eight week uh, program or eight, yeah, eight week step program uh, in that uh, development there. With that being said, I'd have, be happy to answer any questions you might have uh, on the department's report as a whole that's been issued. Questions? Thank you. Thank you very much. I do not have a chairman's report, but I don't know if any of the other commissioners may have any type of report or update they would like to give. Okay. Moving forward, old business, special events. Mr. Woody, do you have comments? Yes, sir. I have a presentation slide here if everyone uh, would add this to their calendar, both commission as well as our listening public. On Friday, December 1st, uh, here at the Prescott Valley Event Center, in partnership with the Prescott Valley Chamber of Commerce, the town presents the Holiday Festival of Lights program. This is actually a culmination of a variety of different programs and services, one of which is Create a Tree, hosted by the Prescott Valley Arts and Culture Commission. Uh, we have uh, events that are going to kick off on that particular uh, evening, starting at 5 o'clock, uh, hosted at Theater on the Green, will be a choral performance by the Coyote Springs Choir, followed then by also by the Bradshaw Mountain Middle School Choir. Uh, Mayor Harvey Skoog will join us. He'll have a uh, holiday greeting uh, message that he will convey to us, uh, followed then by Chamber CEO Ms. Marnie Yule with a reading of the night before Christmas for all of our young people that will be there on site. Now you might ask yourself, well, why are they joining us for this? Well, of course, that's the particular evening is the lighting of the Civic Center campus. Our teams have been hard at work, believe it or not, starting all the way back on October 1st. That's our kickoff day. And of course, there's all kinds of lead programming and ordering and collection of materials in support of that. But the installation of the lights begins all the way back on October 1st. And they're still working on those displays today. Uh, so all of that lighting, the light will be, or the switch will be flipped at 6 o'clock on Friday, December 1st. And then as soon as that uh, switch is flipped and everyone uh, enjoys the view shed of all of those lights, uh, shortly following will be the night light parade. Uh, so those entries will uh, traverse uh, Main Street uh, coming from the event center and then turn onto Lakeshore Drive and then circle i.e. Civic Circle uh, campus, so everyone can be able to join us there on the uh, sidewalks and multi-use path and be able to say all of the displays. The important part is Santa will be on the fire truck this year in, in that parade. And then as soon as the uh, truck does its complete route, uh, he will be joining us along with Mrs. Claus in the Civic Center, uh, roughly about 6.30, perhaps maybe even a little bit earlier, uh, for a free opportunity for pitchers. Uh, so they'll be upstairs in the activity room on the third floor of the Prescott Valley Civic Center. Following that is also the kickoff for the created tree display that we spoke of earlier. And that display will take place all the way through January 2nd. Uh, the important part of that is you'll be able to see all of the different uh, creative interest on display of different groups and organizations, but the commission has a ballot box, that's the word I was looking for, in regards to the community's uh, choice or the community's uh, winner there. So come stuff that ballot box, you'll be able to have that opportunity each and every day from December 1st through January 2nd. Uh, then that winner will be announced and in attendance during uh, the commission's January meeting. So very much looking forward to that and doing so. So if you haven't applied to be in Create a Tree, please do so. Get those entries in before November 17th. Have on your schedule Friday, December 1st for all the fun and festivus 
that will take place. I know that uh, we'll also have our scout groups. They'll have some mistletoe and some cookies and some hot cocoa available uh, to us that particular evening as part of their fundraisers and supporting their activities throughout the remainder of the year. So very fun, festive, uh, enlightening. Uh, ooh, that was a bad one, I know. Uh, experience in flipping the switch, enjoy all the festivities, see all the parade entries from all of our different community groups, celebrate community, celebrate the holiday season, and join with us out there. Again, that was December 1st? Friday, December 1st, all starting at 5 p.m. 5 p.m. And Director Woody, I'm going to ask you this with the caveat that I have not looked at the last uh, edition of the paper that was just put in my driveway. <laughs> Um, but we're two weeks out from that event. Is there going to be some coverage in the newspaper? I, one of the things I always look forward to every year is the event calendar of all of the activities that are being Yes, ma'am. Uh, there's been a variety of uh, posted ads on this, uh, both in the paper, uh, getting information in regards to the social media. I know that those opportunities are available uh, via the town website. Uh, if you're a Facebook uh, fanatic, you'll be able to also like the town uh, Facebook, so you'll be able to have that information shared with you as well. And I know in partnership with the chamber, there's a variety of different public service announcements. And yes, there, there typically has always been uh, the Prescott Valley Tribune uh, has a lead article uh, in celebration of that event, also with the schedule of different activities. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Any additional comments? Uh, if you are interested in pictures with Santa on that particular evening, again, it's a free photo opportunity, and those photos will be downloadable off of the town's Flickr account, and that will have connectivity again coming from the town website for that, if you have those interests. Okay. I understand there's an art contest. There is. Place. It's, it's a pretty crazy one. And it's a lot of fun. I, again, uh, Councilwoman Rooney was indicating 40, 40th anniversary for the town. Uh, so in celebration of the month of February, why? Because you heart folks in the month of February. So in celebrating that, we have an I Love PV poster contest in celebration of the town's 40th anniversary. This is a community art contest and we encourage all folks to participate. The poster's content will again focus on why I love the town of Prescott Valley. And all of the posters are going to be two-dimensional works and they are to be original works uh, submitted. Uh, the size, uh, we're looking for nothing smaller than an eight and a half by 11 uh, display, but also no larger than an 18 by 24 entry. These entries are entirely free. Uh, entry, can, entry forms and contest rules can all be found on the town's website at pvaz.net. You'll be able to download that there. Uh, it is open again, as I mentioned earlier, to all ages. We have five different separate age categories. And this will be a juried show, uh, and I appreciate the commission's support in sponsoring this. Uh, the commission, as well as then uh, invited guests, will be part of the jury uh, that will select the winning entries uh, that are available for this public exhibition and its prizes. Uh, the winners will be announced and recognized at the town council's February meetings. Uh, for more information, again, visit us at pvaz.net. Give us a phone call at the office at 75930, encouraging everyone to download immediately and complete their submission and enter it prior to or on Friday, January 12th. All right. Any questions in regards to the I Love Prescott Valley poster contest? Okay. With that, the only other information related to that program, just for the commission's uh, information as instructed, uh, staff was able to uh, submit uh, directly to the students in our charter and uh, public schools uh, the entry forms themselves. So if they're lost in transit and mom and dad are listening or grandma and grandpa have interest in supporting their young people in the program, again, go to the town website and download that entry form. Okay. All right. 
We talked a little earlier uh, in the evening in regards to the public art exhibit and the work that uh, Hope has been doing. Uh, she presented uh, this slide uh, for your review this, uh, this evening uh, based upon some original uh, direction. Uh, so we have this uh, listed for folks to engage and participate. In January, uh, our display themes are my favorite thing in Prescott Valley for display in January. Uh, we were just mentioning the I Love PV poster contest. That will be part of our public art display. Uh, for the month of February. In the month of March, we celebrate Youth Arts Month, uh, so we will have all of our youth artists on display here. Um, and throughout the month of March, not only here at the library, but also at the Civic Center. In April, we're focusing on nature, and if at all possible, definitely liking to focus on nature and here in Prescott Valley. In May and June will be photography, July and August will be a focus on the 40 years because that's the period in which we'll be highlighting the celebration of the town of Prescott Valley. In September is the studio tour artists. October and November will be for the fall for the arts juried art show that we had talked about a little earlier that's currently on display. And December will be a returning focus on our Create a Tree program that those entries are available now and will need to be submitted by November 17th. So this is our lineup for the 2018 public art exhibit display. During the public art display, I see you have both uh, kids, adults, someone could be a professional artist, someone could be a weekend artist That's to right. display. So there's an opportunity here at the uh, government center to display. That is Regardless correct. of your age or Start to say abilities, but yes, we do want you to be able to draw or yes. Yes. be artistic. Yes, that is correct. And our uh, public art exhibit uh, does have some directions and some guidelines and criteria that one needs to adhere to. Uh, all of that information, again, can be downloaded off the town's website. Uh, or you can give us a phone call at the office. Uh, both Hope and I will be able to assist anyone with, with that. Uh, so if they have a specific uh, theme connection or if they're looking for more information, they can do such. The work can also be listed for sale. So if the artist would like to offer their work for sale, they can also do that in this program too. Good. So all you artists, buddy and artists, please go to our website to get more information, and please come display your wares. You got it. All right. Okay. Uh, without that, I do not believe we have any additional old business for uh, commission's review, consideration, or updates. Thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. Moving on, new business. Is there any new business to come before the commission? <clears throat> if not... Very good. We did uh, find out and confirm. I'm going to go over and steal this note real quick. There's the question asked earlier in regards to the walking uh, tour of the Valley of Lights. So we did a little Google searching. The Valley of Lights will be made available for a personal walkthrough on Tuesday, November 28th from 6 to 9 p.m. So what you'll be able to do is you uh, normally travel to go to the Valley of Lights. You will see then assigned parking areas. So there will be volunteer folks out there to help direct you to those locations. You'll then be able to get on a shuttle and we'll take you down into the park. And then you'll be able, you'll be dropped off and then we'll allow that leisurely stroll throughout Fane Park and the displays that uh, culminate in the totality of the Valley of Lights program. Once you reach the other end, that shuttle will continue to take you uh, back to your parking destinations and drop you off there. So that is an opportunity for folks to engage first time ever in regards to a walking stroll through the Valley of Lights. Don't do it like I did my first time here 10 years ago. Oh, Valley of Lights. I'll go down there and park and get out and start to walk around. Uh, oops. <laughs> I need to get out of here. <laughs> this is a driving thing. Quit walking. Because <laughs> it did ask you to remain in your car during the driving process. So this is that fun opportunity to get out there and be amongst the lights. Tuesday, November 28th, 6 to 9 p.m. 
Thank you very much. I would just say kudos to the Chamber of Commerce for coming up with that idea. I think that's just awesome. Unscheduled public appearances. Are there any? If not, moving on. Our next meeting of the Prescott Valley Art and Culture Commission work study. The work study meeting will take place Wednesday, January 17th, 2018 at 5.30 p.m. here in the auditorium. And the uh, Art and Culture Commission regular meeting will take place Wednesday, again, January 17th, 2018 at 6.30 here in the auditorium. And I do invite everyone to come participate in the uh, Art and Culture Commission uh, work study and regular meeting. It's open to the public and we do want to hear from the public uh, regarding art and culture in the community. With uh, that, I call for an adjournment. Can I get a motion? I make a motion that we adjourn. We have a motion to adjourn. Can I get a second? Second the motion. We have a motion and a second to adjourn the Art and Culture Commission November 15th, 2017 meeting. All in favor, say aye. 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 Oppose? No oppose. Meeting adjourned. Thank you very much.